All right, it is the fifth episode of the Rapid Rating Climb series to 2000 Elo. We're getting right into this against the free answer from Turkey. I'll be trying to explain my moves for those of you who are new to the channel as I play. And we're just trying to get back to 2000 Elo. We were previously at that in this series, but it fell off. So playlist is linked below for the previous episodes. My opponent goes for the Sicilian. And like the previous video on this channel and the previous um, episode of this series, we're going to be playing the A3 Sicilian. Now, I absolutely love this system. This was a system introduced to me by Gotham Chess. And the main moves that you want to see is white from black on move two. A knight c6 and e6. And my opponent goes for e6. So the whole point of this A3 Sicilian is to support the move b4. And both knight c6 and e6 add another attacker to the b4 square. So the entire idea is to give up the b4 pawn. And I don't know what my opponent's going to do, obviously. He might decline the gambit. He might accept it. He declines it. So if you want to see what happens if black takes the pawn, then check out the video that will be like the previous episode in the playlist. I'll add it as like a card or something at the end of the video. So my opponent doesn't accept it. And I believe the idea here is to push b5 and kick the knight off of its nice square on c6. If the knight comes to d4, then after c3 it's just trapped. So it can't venture too far into our territory. I'm expecting knight e5. And honestly, my um, knowledge of theory is a little bit fuzzy there. But I would assume maybe bishop b2 is pretty good. Just attacking the knight. And if the knight goes to g6, then we have good scope on the g7 diagonal. We could push f4, but I think it's a bit unnecessary. I don't see the need to do that. So. I'm going to go bishop b2. My opponent could do something like queen c7. Bishop d6 would get in the way of the d-pawn, but he goes knight g6, which I honestly want to see. So, okay, my opponent will probably be able to play d5 if he wants to. And we could meet that with the move e5. Of course, we don't have to. It's not obvious how to proceed here. I'm tempted to play d4. To try and give my knight the d2 square and after takes maybe i can take with the queen because there's no knight going to c6 to kick the queen out and then we have good scope on g7 we're doing a good job of pre preventing d5 we can maybe try bishop c4 as well dropping back to b3 we could of course be nice and simple with the move knight f3 but i'm not sure after knight f3 d5 what the plan is so i feel like we should strike in the center quickly <clears throat> this knight could come to um <clears throat> f4 as well because our bishop has vacated the c1 square but i don't think that's too big of a problem let's go d4 let's try and instigate in the center my opponent could do something like knight to f6 just to go after the e4 pawn but we could just push probably and if like knight d5 c4 we grab a ton of space so he takes, and I think taking with the queen makes the most sense to me. If we take with the queen and then like queen c7 going after c2, we can always play like c4 and form like a Maroxy bind on the d5 square. That could be quite nice. I'm a fan of that. Let's take with the queen. And... I mean, the, the queen is just targeting a lot of different things. She's also not easy for black to attack. He could play something like queen f6 and offer a queen trade. But I think we'd probably just go knight f3. And if he takes us, then we can take back over piece and we get a bit more development. He goes d6. I mean, it's a perfectly fine move. Um... I'm tempted to go c4, but since he played d6, he's not really going to be trying to play d5 anytime soon, because why would he play it in two moves? He, I assume he's maybe trying to develop this bishop, or maybe put a knight there? I'm not sure. We I could just go knight d2 and continue with the development. I don't want to put the knight on c3, because that just gets in the way of the bishop. 
Knight F3 looks fine as well. Nothing wrong with that. I suppose we stopped the queen from coming out to a potentially annoying square as well. And we're getting closer to castling kingside, which I think is where we should be going in this position. I mean, castling queenside just seems way too over the top, <laughs> considering my pawn is all the way on b5, which looks a little bit awkward, but it is restricting black's position. And he goes e5. Well, that's unexpected. And this kind of looks like some, um, I think some Nidorf positions get this sort of structure with the pawns on d6 and e5. Of course, the d6 pawn is backward, and it's going to be difficult for black to um, do a whole lot with it. We could go queen d5, but then we can get targeted when he's like knight f5. Bishop b6 would hang the b7 pawn, but knight f5 is annoying. So, uh, queen d2 looks fine, and then we can put the knight on c3 to get into d5, put the bishop on c4. Drop it back to b3. That looks pretty good to me. I'm pretty happy with that. The main thing that I think black has going for him is that he can put the knight on f4. But it's not necessarily doing anything yet. We could always play g3 to stop that, but no need to do that prematurely. I think knight c3 makes a lot of sense. Just defending the e4 pawn. We can also prepare moves like rook d1. We could castle queenside if we really want to. And it might not be that stupid. Because whilst our B pawn is quite far advanced, we do also like control a lot of space on the queen side. And it might be difficult for black to actually make any progress there. Real quick, if you are new to the channel and you're enjoying this style of content, then I would really appreciate if you could drop a like and subscribe so that you can get notified for my future uploads, get this kind of content recommended to you on your homepage, and hopefully you can continue to learn and also enjoy the chess videos. Okay, yeah, bishop e6 makes a lot of sense. He's just trying to add a lot of um, protection to d5, because if, if black can make d5 happen, he's probably good. He's probably good. So I'm tempted to go rook d1, just to add further defense. And then if d5... Take with the pawn because if we take with the knight then the e4 pawn is hanging and then we have three defenders he has three attackers and we're all good he does stop us from going bishop c4 so maybe the i don't really want to put the bishop on d3 because that blocks our queen's access to d5 so okay it's not obvious how i'm going to develop this bishop maybe g3 bishop g2 and if we move the knight, then we have good scope on d5. That's a possibility. But the bishop on f1 is doing a good job of defending b5. I guess we can always push a4. Also, if we play g3, bishop, g2, this bishop could come to c4 and do some annoying stuff. Although if we're already castled, we can just play rook e1. So it's not the end of the world. I think uh, rook d1 is a good move. We don't want to let him play d5 because that's the main idea of the black position. And I'm expecting something like bishop e7 castles. And we'll just play chess. I may play if he goes bishop e7 h4. And then if he castles h5. If the knight comes into f4 then g3. Then ah, h5 would hang because he'd have two attackers. So we might have to start with g3 and then go h4 in that scenario. That wouldn't be a terrible plan anyway, since g3, bishop, g2 wouldn't be stupid, uh, regardless of whether we throw the h-pawn down the board or not. I'm just thinking that if bishop e7 is played, then this knight is kind of running out of squares. Okay, queen c7. Unexpected. I don't think he's going to castle queenside. That would be very surprising. G3 looks like a good move. You might be trying to play rook d8, but then why wouldn't you put the queen on d7? To help support the push. We could also consider knight g5 to go after the bishop. Oh, maybe he's trying to go bishop c4. Maybe that's the idea. 
Mmm, okay. Could I have... I guess I could have gone knight g5 on this move. Hmm. Okay, knight g5, bishop c4. An interesting move. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. I don't know how we add extra defense to this. Because queen e2 and queen d3 are vulnerable to knight f4. So, a nice plan. We, we could go knight d5 to block the bishop's access. But then that hangs e4. And also, if we trade on d5, I don't really want to put a pawn there. Because I want access to d6. And if I have a pawn on d5, I can't access d6 on the d file very easily. So... Don't really want to do that. Hmm, this isn't obvious. Isn't obvious. Because if g3, bishop c4, and bishop g2, then I can't castle because the bishop is cutting me off. Hmm. If g3, bishop c4, I could maybe go h4? Try and put pressure on the knight. Doesn't look that promising, in all honesty. We could go, like, g3, and then if bishop c4, we'll just go bishop e2. Uh, I don't know. That's not amazing. I'd love to put a knight on the f5 square to target d6 and g7, but I'd have to go to h4 to access that square, I think, which isn't that easy. And this knight can't really move like this because e4 would hang. I suppose we could go bishop d3, and if bishop c4... Yeah, but then we take our eyes off of d5, which is the whole reason I discarded bishop d3 earlier on. So again, mm, not sure I like that. h3, g4, g5 just invites knight h5 to access f4. So maybe g3 is just a good move. If my opponent tries something like bishop g4, we can just go bishop e2. If he tries to sneak into the h3 square, we can just go knight g5 to kick him out. So I'm going to go g3. I think Regardless of whether we put the bishop on g2 or not, it's going to be a useful move. Okay, h6 stops knight g5. Yeah, makes sense. He's also playing quickly, which is good for him. Not for me. If bishop g2, bishop c4. But then maybe we can try like h4, h5, and then knight h4 and knight f5. That could be good. I might start with h4. Might start with it. Yeah, let's do it. I don't think it can necessarily be bad in terms of the move itself. If I'm neglecting something else, then it could be bad. But I don't think the move itself is a problem, if you understand what I mean. Because what I want to do is kick this knight away from g6. And if it goes to e7, it's going to be blocking this bishop's defense of d6 for a start. But also gives my knight access to h4 to potentially come into f5. Which if the knight is on e7, he'll be controlling that square, of course. But the knight is a bit of a nuisance on h4 potentially. Although... If something like h5 and knight e7, knight h4, then the h5 pawn could hang. So it might just be a case of booting the knight out of g6 for the sake of it. And obviously the knight going to e7 would hang the d6 pawn. So my opponent might have to go rook d8 to add some extra defense. If something like rook d8, h5, knight e7, then he's pretty close to making d5 happen. Which I'm not thrilled about, of course. Not thrilled about. I mean, if d5 does happen, 
then e5 could become quite unstable though. Because our knight is currently attacking it, our bishop could be attacking it. If we boot this knight away, then the knight will no longer be defending it. And having a queen defending a pawn isn't that stable of an option. Also, if this queen is responsible for guarding pawns, it makes it more difficult for my opponent to try and play bishop c4 because the queen could get overloaded with too many things to watch over. So, again, another factor worth considering. I think h4 also just poses a bit of a question to black. Whoa, bishop e7. So if h5, knight f8, he might be trying to reroute through d7 to a square like c5 or b6, c4. It's an interesting idea. Very interesting idea. And then he maintains the defense of d6. Could consider knight d5. He can't take e4 because his queen hangs. Knight d5. If knight d5, pawn d5, something like bishop to g4, bishop e2. It's not bad, but my bishop's kind of out of the game. Because the d6 pawn is secured if my pawn ends up on d5, which means the e5 pawn is secured. But then maybe I can play like c4 to lock everything up. <laughs> hmm. h5, knight f8. Knight h5. Sorry, knight h4, knight h5. Knight f5. Take. Take knight f6. Wait, actually, if h5, knight f8, knight h4, if knight h5, can I go knight d5? Ah, then the bishop takes me. I'm going to throw in h5. Because kicking the knight back to f8, I refuse to believe that's a bad thing. But, of course, it does have a nice plan to get back into the game. So we need to try and act fairly quickly. Fairly quickly. Hmm. What do I do? What do I do? It's, I'm not really familiar with these positions, in all honesty. This is kind of difficult for me to figure out. Maybe b6? To free up the b5 square for a knight? But then this knight can just take e4. Part of me wants to go bishop h3 to trade this bishop off. But, I don't know, it looks flimsy. Knight d5 looks like, I sh looks like it should be played, but it also doesn't look good. Because, like... Knight uh... d5... Knight d5, pawn d5, bishop g4, bishop e2. I don't know. I don't know. I could just go bishop e2. And if like knight d7 just castle. Knight c5. Wouldn't be bad, necessarily. Although bishop g2 looks better. I'm going to go bishop g2. I don't know if this is a good move. I, maybe my opponent can just play like nice... Sorry, bishop c4 to stop me from castling. He doesn't. If I do castle, he can take on h5. 
which, you know, it's not amazing. Knight h4. We go knight d5 now. I don't know what changes to me playing it previously, though. Hmm. I want a castle, but then h5 is a problem. Hmm. I really am not sure what the plan should be here. I want a castle, but knight h5. I'm going to castle. My idea is, if knight h5, I'm going to play knight d5, which should force him to trade off his light squared bishop, and then I can try and access f5, because the bishop will be o the bishop will no longer be there. Okay, he doesn't do that, so... Let's go rook e1 to defend e4, because he's attacking it. Maybe I could have gone knight h4 to open the bishop's defense up, but rook e1 is always a useful move, because bishop c4 could come with tempo any time. And also we're just securing the pawn. Okay, he does now take, so... I feel like I should play this move. Now that he can't take with the knight... And then we secure the bishop pair. Hmm. Let's do it. I genuinely don't have a better idea. We could take with the queen. We could. And then if like knight f6... Ah, uh, then it's difficult to defend e4. Hmm. Take castle. Can we maybe take, take, take? I don't think it works, though. Just bishop d6. Okay, I think queen takes is probably... Necessary. Queen c4 looks like it holds on to the pawn. Our bishop isn't amazing right now, unfortunately. Opponent's making great use of c5. Okay. Is he now threatening this? Maybe. Uh, no, because if we just take the queen. Knight h5, knight f5. Sorry, knight h4, knight f5 looks pretty good. I don't think the knight can move anywhere useful. Hmm. Here. What about just like knight e6, offering a queen trade and going after c2? That looks a bit more of an issue. Here, here. We trade queens and go knight f5, then d6 is quite weak. But knight h4. Four ninety six takes takes here. You can just take on c two. Can just take on c two. Ugh. Okay, I think we can defend c two like this. If he tries knight e four, then. Trade queens. Can we take here? And then, like, open this up. 
This is not amazing. Maybe it's playable, though. I, I don't know whether I should have taken on, e, on E5, but... Okay. That's pretty accurate. Or it looks accurate. Let's go C4. Hmm. I don't like this. I really don't. We're down a pawn. We can try and hold on here, but I don't really believe in it. If my pawn was on B4 and this was on C5, then maybe I would, but it's not the case. The issue is the C4 pawn is so weak. I'd, it's really tough to defend it. Okay, well, we stop this rook from infiltrating with our king. So at least we have that. This is annoying, though. And that is annoying. Okay. If he goes to D1, it's not the end of the world. E3 is a pain, though. So A3 is an issue. So we probably have to try and trade rooks. But if he trades, then our king could get in. Rook D1, then maybe our king marches in on the light squares somehow. If we trade all the rooks, I think we lose. Although, we have a majority on the queen side. And his king is pretty far away, which is in our favour. Because if we can break through on the queen side, we might force him to sack his bishop. Ah, bishop c5, I missed that. Although we can venture further in, because our rook is defending this. It's not pretty, but it might be necessary. Hmm, I'm trying not to get mated by opening up the e-file. Our rook isn't great. Okay, I'm going to do it. I think I calculated a line where I don't get mated. Although, if I take with the pawn, I'm giving him an outside passer, which was maybe stupid. I might have to take with the king, but then like rook b3. It's very annoying. Pawn takes. The H pawn is an issue, but I don't know what else I can do. That was a bad decision from me. I was calculating a line rook d4, king f5. Sorry, rook d4, king f3. Ah, then he can just go. Oh no, he can just go rook d3, and after I move, he can just take on a3. Although maybe then c5, c6. That might be worth trying. To sack the A3 pawn to get rid of this bishop. Oof. That looks good. For him. I don't know. I don't know. It looks... It, it all looks bad. It all looks bad. And my king can't do anything useful. Maybe I could have gone king f5, but then, uh, no, maybe that was better, actually, to stop this king from getting in. Now I'd have to play f5, which I might have to do, although I don't want to. I could leave the tension, but I have no threats of my own because this bishop blocks all of my pawn advancement. This is rough. This is so rough. I have no activity. That's my problem. I don't actually know what... Ah, oh, I just allowed him to trade rooks. Now it's got to be game over. I can maybe try and fight on. We are only down one pawn, I guess. But it looks pretty bleak. H4 should do the trick. K. 
Okay. Now I can try and abandon this A3 pawn to go after A7 to maybe force something through. That looks really weird. Because now I can sneak the C pawn through. Okay, maybe, maybe we can draw this. If we can force him to sack his bishop for the pawn, then we can probably draw. Okay, we can't let the king in, so let's boot out. We don't want the king to come here. And I assume we push. We could have tried for a repetition, but I think that's worse. Yeah, bishop f4, we just control c7. Hold on a minute. Uh, there is a chance this could be winning as well. There is a chance. Because we'll have a bishop for two pawns. The king is way too far away. Damn, okay. My, my opponent has blundered massively here. He's just messed this up. I mean, I'm not like having a, I'm not making fun of my opponent or anything like that because I do I, I do that kind of thing 24/7. You know, if if you've watched more than one of my videos, you know I mess I mess winning positions up all the time. Literally take a look at last episode of this series. It, that was tragic. Absolutely tragic. Great game though, and again, hats off to my opponent in that game because he defended very, very well. But yeah, his his king is also just cut off from accessing the square that he needs to go to because then he can target the pawn, and if he wins the f pawn, then he's probably winning. But if we don't let him do that, then uh, I think we're good. Okay, maybe. Yeah, I mean, let's just win the bishop. There's nothing too... We should think too hard about. If king to h6, we should go bishop to f4, I think. To stop him from coming to g5. He's going to go to h5. The a6 pawn on a light square is annoying. Maybe we can zugzwang him, though. If I'm um, king h2, he can only move pawns. And if he moves either of these pawns, we just advance. Wait, I'm actually going to lock him on a dark square, I think. Let's lock him on a dark square. I think we've cracked it. We just need to not let him access g4. That's the only thing we need to do. King h3. G2. Wait. I was thinking this, but that, that's stupid. I assume he's going to go G2. Maybe Bishop E3 is more accurate. G1, take. King G5. Hmm. Here, here. Hmm. Don't love it. Yeah, he's basically forcing even my king or bishop to deflect so that he can access either g4 or g5 to go after my pawn. I feel like it's better to do it this way around. Mm, we might be able to win this, actually. It's not obvious what my next move is, though. I don't know what I should do next. Wait, bishop d4 looks good. Because after takes, takes... He doesn't have an obvious square to go to to move his king out of the way and to protect f6. He probably has to, like, retreat. Oh! It's the wrong colour pawn on a8, though, because I've got the wrong colour bishop. So he can give both of these pawns up, and he draws. Oh, wow. 
Uh, he definitely noticed that. Fair play. Yeah, yeah, this is just a draw. A theoretical draw, because if he loses both pawns, it doesn't matter. I don't think I can do anything more. Yeah, he knows it. Also, that... Hmm. Ah, if here, 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 then he just goes to b3, and I can't defend the pawn. So, okay, it's a draw. But we were completely losing, so, you know, I'm not going to complain. Very well played to my opponent for, like, creating a drawing situation in that endgame. But he definitely let it slide in that endgame. Um, I don't know how, like, why the opening went so badly. Because it looked like it should be a good position, and then it just just fell apart. So it'll be interesting to see what the computer analysis has to say. I would encourage you guys to stick around for the analysis. If you don't want to, then I would say check out the playlist below. Have a look at some of the previous episodes of the Rapid Rating Climb if you're new to the channel. And if you are a subscriber of the channel for a long time, I bet there's some episodes that you've missed. Let's get into the analysis. Let's see what happened in that game. All right, so that game was not pretty for either of us. We both had, well, I had 75.8, my opponent 76.9% accuracy. So mid-70s, look like the um, the chart, like the, um, I, I don't know what you call it, but where the uh, game review gives like a graph, basically. There's a lot of spikes and a lot of dips. So um, definitely an interesting game. I don't normally have people reject the uh, gambit in this way because normally in this position, I have like, I mean, I mean, the previous video was in this opening, so check that out if you're interested. But I have like a 74% win rate in this position. And the idea is to play like C3, D4, take a massive center. A lot of people play D5 here, which looks natural, but it's a big mistake because of E5 taking up the f6 square, and it's very difficult to develop this knight. In that previous game, my opponent went to h6, I took it immediately, and my opponent really had to deal with that bad pawn structure for the rest of the game. Here, though, my opponent goes knight c6, and I really did not know what to do here, so I went b5, which is the best move. The knight went to e5, and apparently, instead of bishop b... No, actually, bishop b2 is the best. Bishop b2, knight g6... I was half expecting something like queen c7, but I wasn't too fast. Apparently c4 is just really good, or g3, just fiancettoing this bishop. So he goes knight g6, and d4 is actually a mistake. Queen e2 is the best move. I mean, I'm never finding that. Next best move, knight f3, g3 is also good. I should have maybe just gone knight f3 to just solidify my control over e5. I didn't like d5. I thought I probably had to take. And I don't know, I thought black's doing quite well. The computer just wants me to trade queens here. Um, I suppose I could push e5, but normally if black gets d4 in these types of positions, it's typically bad for white. Maybe not in that exact one, but in general. So I went d4, takes takes, d6, which kind of surprised me. Knight f3, e5, queen d2. Queen d3 was actually better. And if knight f4, then we just drop back again. Uh, no, the computer changes its mind now. So yeah, queen d2 is better than queen d3. Knight f6, knight c3 defending, bishop e6. And yeah, here I needed to go knight g5. And I just, for some reason, didn't clock this idea. I think because I just don't play these positions that often. I just didn't really consider it, but... Yeah, it makes a whole lot of sense because the bishop doesn't have the c4 square. If the bishop retreats, then he's just wasted a move and bishop c4 actually just wins the f7 pawn or you give up the bishop like this and I do something like, I don't know, something like this and it looks pretty good for white. This might not be the most accurate way of going about it, but it looks pretty damn good. So uh, yeah, I went rook d1. This is a miss. Queen c7, bishop e7 was a bit better, g3, and here I just really didn't like the thought of bishop c4. I was considering moves like h4, which apparently the computer really likes. Bishop c4 annoyed me. Apparently I should just trade and ask to trade queens as well. And if we trade queens, 
then C D, and then maybe I can try and play D4. Ah, makes sense. Makes sense. I didn't do it though. We went G3, H6, H4, Bishop E7. And here I was kind of surprised. I went H5, which is an inaccuracy. I guess because the H pawn was just a weakness more than anything else. Knight D5 was good here. Ish. Of course, knight d5 is the move. E d5, bishop g4 is what I was expecting. I was going to go bishop e2. And then, like, I don't know, castle. And, okay, maybe not castle because of h5. Then I have to go to h8. Maybe rook c8. I just didn't like this position very much. c4 is the move. Although, what if bishop f3? Bishop f3... Oh, then rook c1 wins the uh, rook. Okay. So h5, knight f8. I just tried to keep developing. Knight h4 was a better. I think I should have done it on this move. I think I regretted that after not doing it. Because the idea is that if knight h5, then knight f5. I attack the knight, I attack the bishop, I attack g7. If bishop f5, then knight d5 attacking the queen. So I mean like queen d7, let's say. Ef5, if queen f5, then we go to c7. And if... Oh, then the knight is really stuck. So let's say knight f6. b6. This is kind of weird. If you take, then I take, and that's a fork. So if you take on d5, queen d5, if you take this, uh, bishop b5 wins the queen. Really interesting line, but I missed it. And then after this, I didn't think knight h4 worked as well. Yeah, I didn't go for it. I thought... What did I even think? Knight c5? Knight f5? Yeah, so my problem was that even if bishop f5, e f5, I can't put a knight on d5 without trading. Because the knight is on f6 rather than h5, so I didn't see the point. Apparently it's alright though, I guess I opened this bishop up, but my structure looks really weird. My opponent goes knight c5 here, I go rook fe1, knight h4 was better. Maybe. The computer keeps second guessing itself. Knight h5 is a mistake though, so I was right to do this. Knight d5, bd5, bishop d5, I should take with the pawn, rather than the queen. Really? And after castle, knight e5. I considered things like this, but I didn't think they worked. Oh, d6 is the idea. Oh, I missed that. I, I, I just straight up missed that. And that's annoying, so I did consider stuff like that. But, okay, queen d5, knight f6, queen c4, rook c8. And it's just not good. <laughs> it's just not good. I tried something. Knight takes c... Knight takes c4 is a mistake, though. Queen c7, rook c7. That is wrong. Because I should go knight d4? Whoa. So we defend c2. We open up the attack on the knight. If the knight retreats, then knight f5 is a problem. Okay, because if castle's here, 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 and material... I'm only down a pawn, but I've got a bishop pair against a knight pair. My bishops are quite strong. That's really interesting. And if knight d4, if you take it, bishop e4, knight e4, rook e4, f6, bishop d4, b6, and black is good. I guess because his pawns are on dark squares and mine are going to be on light squares, so they're difficult for me to defend. But black would have to be quite accurate here to find these moves. I instead go knight e5, d5, bishop e4. Bishop e5 first is better, and I did consider this. Knight c3. If takes, takes, takes. I'm just down two pieces for a rook. So what am I supposed to do? Rook e e1, knight d1, bishop c7. Knight back to c3. And I'm just down a piece. Okay, well, I don't see how I could have done that. So I went for this instead. F6 is a really nice move. Because if rook c2, I thought, okay, bishop e5, and I can fight on. And the computer thinks that I'm better. Black has to go f5 to just not lose instantly. 
So that's kind of funny. But yeah, f6 is played. I go c4. I really don't know what I should do here, but I'm thinking, okay, I can I can defend c4. I can try and bring my king, and maybe I can invade on the light squares. But my opponent plays well. He goes rook fc8. I have to defend. Rook d7. Bring the king to e2 to stop him getting in. Rook c d8, trying to get into d2 again. Rook c2, rook d3, which surprised me, but okay. I should have gone a4. Hmm. Rook e3, king e3, bishop c5. And here I decided to keep advancing, because th then I can try and pose my opponent some more problems, even if it isn't actually the best idea. I can try something. I go f4. And yeah, this wasn't the best plan to take with... Well, taking with the king was actually worse. Because I thought he could go rook d3. That was my problem. Although h5 is a bit better, but rook d3 is also very good. g4, g5. I go rook h2, king g7. f5, king g7. I think I just said king g7 twice. I meant king g6, king g7. Um, and I just didn't have moves. I go rook e2. I just blundered the fact that rook e8 existed. G4 wins on the spot because my king can no longer defend the rook. I get deflected and I can't access f2 because the bishop controls that square. My opponent missed this though, so you know that's pretty good news for me. And here I'm kind of holding on. G4 throws away most of the advantage. King g2 is a miss. King g3 is better. I thought he could go bishop d6, but king h4 and you can't defend properly. Bishop c5 wins. Anything else is a draw. Let's say, I don't know, b6. I don't think I can take because then you just march on. So it's a very interesting position, but I go king g2, bishop e7, bishop d4. And my idea is if bishop a3, I take on a7 and maybe I can force a pawn through on the queen side. And unless my opponent finds h4 in this position, it's a draw. So there's a lot, a lot of misses here. A6 baffled me though. Absolutely baffled me. So I thought, okay, B A6, B A6, and C5. H4 apparently wins. King H6 is a blunder because of Bishop E3. Although I could just go C6 straight away, but I think the idea is um after Bishop D6, Bishop E3, King G7, and then Bishop B6. So it's the same sort of idea. Bishop e3 is a miss? c6 straight away is better. I don't see what the difference is. I, I, I honestly don't know what the difference is. Mm, tell me in the comments if you know why c6 is better than bishop e3, but I'm really not sure. I give this check anyway. King g7, c6, bishop d8, and I'm winning. Bishop f4 is a miss. <laughs> King g3, and then if, ah, okay, okay, I have to defend the f4 square, but I also stop h4. That's the idea. Okay, wow. Because I didn't realize the power of h4. King h6, my opponent's doing everything he can. I'm doing everything I can. We're playing some only moves here. a4, I'm trying to put my opponent in a zugzwang. If he moves the pawn, he puts it on a dart square. If he goes h3, then king g3, and the king has no way in. If he goes g3, which is what he does in the game, then king h3, which is... A... Why is king f3 better than king h3? No, the computer is... I think it's disagreeing with itself. They're the same, because... Or are they? I think they're the same. A5 apparently draws for black. Because I'm in Zugzwang? I actually don't know. If bishop d2. g2, king g2, king g4. Take. h3, king h2, here. Ah, yeah, and black just gives up these pawns to run his king to, eight, to uh, a8. Because it's, again, wrong color bishop. Interesting. But yeah, he goes g2. I should have taken with the king, but then I was worried about king g4. And the only winning move is bishop h2. For reasons I couldn't tell you. King g6? 
What? What's the idea? King e3, king f5, king f3, king goes back. I don't know what white's plan is. I don't think the computer has a plan. I think it's one of those positions where the computer says white's better, but it's just a draw. Because the theoretically, black can just give these pawns up, run his king to a8, and I can't do anything. Because it's the wrong color bishop. Basically, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the rule is, if you have a flank pawn and a bishop, and a king, obviously, and the opponent's king can get to either corner, right, depending on what the flank pawn is, and your bishop is the opposite colour to the corner square, like the promotion square, then it's a draw. Because you can't force the king out of the a8 square in this scenario without stalemating. That's the idea. But okay, we, we, we do it this way, and I think this is just all a draw, because, yeah, my opponent find a really nice pattern to forcefully win the a4 pawn but it wouldn't have mattered anyway even if uh let's say king c5 here 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 and i start bringing my king and he runs to the corner there is absolutely nothing i can do to force him out of the corner because he can just go to b8 and if i check him he goes to a8 and I have to I have to let him go to a7 or b7, otherwise it's stalemate. And if I get the pawn rolling, let's say something like this, then I can't make any more forward progress because I can't control the a8 square without stalemating him. Well, I, I just can't control the a8 square. If I move my king forward, then I control b7 and it's stalemate. So yeah, it's it's a theoretical draw either way. Well done to my opponent for finding the theoretical draw, although he did kind of throw the endgame, but it happens to everyone. I've done it plenty of times. I've thrown plenty of openings, middle games, and endgames, so I've not really want to talk. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please check out the previous episodes of the Rapid Rating Climb playlist on the... I, I think the end card would have already appeared, actually, so click on that, check it out. I hope you enjoy, and have a good one.